Welcome to the Big Bag. This is our kind of franchise show brought to you by the same people behind Merrillyand and Cumberlay Corner. My name is Mark Machado. If you haven't watched us before, if you haven't listened to us before, hit that subscribe button, hit that follow, follow us across socials. Um, I'm, we're setting up our socials as, as I speak this. Um, so we'll leave all the links in the descriptions below wherever you're finding this. Um, on my esteemed panel today, we've got um, cricket historian Nick Brooks and professional cricket watcher Rob Barron joins us, making his debut on our platform. Thanks for coming along, Rob. Um, we we are going to go through, um, in, our, in our kind of preview in our first episode, we looked at what we thought might happen at the auction. There's a few things we definitely picked out that were going to happen, that happened. And there's a few things we got wrong. And we'll talk about all of that as we go through it today. Uh, we'll go through all the teams, look at their squads, uh, tell you where we think they might have overspent, tell you where we think they might be a little bit weak, and look at some of the kind of stranger picks. Then we'll finish this all off by talking about the players who didn't manage to get IPL contracts as well. Um, let's start with the Chennai Super Kings, just because they're top of my list. Um, Rob, they've been a fairly consistent team the last kind of few years didn't get to the, to the final last season um what do you make of the, of the squad that they've assembled i quite like it i mean you can never discount chennai and i think the trick they missed in the ipl just gone is they didn't make it spinny enough at home particularly at the start of the tournament it used to be that we'll take you to the you know cheap hawk and it's going to rag or stay low and you're dead and that didn't happen. It was a road for the first few and it cost them. They're not set up. And I, I would say still after this auction, they're not set up to have a shootout with people on roads. But their thing is get you into the dirt and spin you to death. And when you've got Patharana, Patharana scooping up the wickets at the end, you know, death loading him, uh, I think they're a, they're a very good side. They're not going to blow teams away and score the 260s that some teams are capable of, but they're consistent. And looking at the pickups, bearing in mind that uh, Punjab bet the farm on Sam Curran last year to get him for what half of what no, not even half 20% of what he went for last time I actually think and I'm not a massive Sam Curran fan but I actually think that's quite a good bit of business um, don't talk to me about Vijay Shankar because I've got to go to bed tonight um, there there are some <laughs> names that are like, what are you doing there Vijay Shankar what are you doing there Jamie Overton but I think they're they're one of the smarter franchises historically. Like they're not Punjab, are they? Just making you know drawing names out of the yeah. hat. The Dhoni thing's really funny. I think Tripathi is a very good bit of business at three point four crore. Um, I love his hyper intent. I think he's a straight swap for the um, old man Rahane, kind of trying to get him to whack it for seven balls, and they probably went a year too too long with Rahane. I think slotting him in at probably three with the very dependable guy quad Conway axis at the top and like with the spinners and path and Nor Ahmed is someone they've spent a lot of cash on, but he has a very high ceiling. And if you're going to like, we'll talk about ridiculous buys in a bit, but if you're going to spend a lot of money, do it with someone with a high ceiling and Nor is already good, but he could be unbelievable. And if pitches suit him, great. I mean, he's, he's, he's very one dimensional. He's not going to win you games in the field um, and he's not going to win you games with the bat. But he's a very good cricket. I think they bought better than most and not the best. I think they were okay. Like they they spent a lot of money retaining the guys like Jadeja and Ashwin. Um, they're always going to be there or thereabouts. Some of the bench players, I mean, Khalil, I think, was quite a smart pickup as well. He's got plenty of experience. He gets you polls. He probably is fit for half the games. But players like Huda don't fill me with huge confidence like but they're, they're going to be all right, Chano. What do you guys reckon? I, I was surprised that they retained um, Conway and Ratchin. Not because I have any beef against either of those two players. I think they're, they're absolutely fantastic. But I just thought that they might have thought maybe want to refresh this, maybe not as convinced about Ratchin um, as a T20 player at this moment as, as the kind of money that they were going to have to lay out to keep him would be. Um and I thought they might have felt they might have wanted to change things up with Conway. I think again, Ashwin was was a masterstroke um, from them. Like I mean, in in the IPL, we're still not. And I, I made this point last time around. But we're still not in a, in a position, or in in the IPL. Actually, I rephrase this: very few players 
are associated with particular teams. I mean, you've got this in CSK with Dhoni. You just think Chennai, right? And obviously, um, we'll talk about this at some point. With Mumbai, you think Tundalka, right? Um, and Ashwin, you might... He's played for a few teams now, but you definitely associate him with Chennai. So I think kind of for the brand, it might not be yeah. a bad thing. As well as the fact that you know he's an he's an incredible cricketer as well. I do think though the picks of Curran and Overton, from a kind of South Asian perspective, from a Sri Lanka fans perspective, you look at those picks and they feel quite frustrating, don't they, Nick? Yeah, I've got to say I'm not a huge uh, Sammy Curran fan, but I can see the value of him at two point four crore. I think that some of these pickups, like Tripathi for three point four, Ratchin for four, Nathan Ellis for two, I think they've done really good business on the whole. And as Rob said, if you get Dusty Chepot wickets and you've got twelve overs of Noor Ashwin Jadeja plus Paturana at the back end, uh, they're in pretty good shape. I think. I think they did well to stay out of the sort of hurricane that was going on on day one, and they've bought pretty shrewdly. I think. They've got. You can see a decent eleven taking shape here. Um, Shall we move on to RCB? Um, obviously, they've kept Vera out. They've brought Phil Salt in. Um, they've got Hazelwood as well. I'm not particularly convinced about Hazelwood in in kind of India in T20, but maybe I'm totally wrong. Rob, you're giving me a look there. I so I, I had an argument with Jared Kimber earlier about Hazelwood and shock of all shocks he went with the Aussie but I think they overpaid no him. Way. I, think, I, I think that's yeah he, he's a huge fan I think he's got a long home summer of test cricket to get through before this and he's knocking on a bit he can't offer you anything with bat or in the field and I don't rate his death bowling he is really dependable I think in the age of um impact subs he's the sort of guy that you can just try and bowl through as many of his overs as you can at the start and then off you go Josh thank, thanks but Bangalore have made a long and consistent habit of doing daft things at the auction and they love overpaying. Um, so I'm not shocked that they overpaid for him. They have quite a fun middle order. I think Jitesh was expensive. I don't know why they've they've spent six odd crore on Krunal, who is who is going down. I'd like to see I think Bethel might be a good bit of business. He could be unbelievable. We don't know. We've seen glimpses so far. Um He's probably going to be one of the best fielders in the tournament, so just keep subbing him on for cart horses like Padical or whoever. Um, the middle order is really fun. Verat was great in the IPL, just gone. He got the most runs, didn't he? Salt is a good like the the openers look very solid. I don't like Padical as a T Twenty player. He stank the place out. He's never shown never shown that he's going to smash it. He's never shown a fifth gear. But the middle order, like Jitesh, Livingston, and Patidar, that is a lot of fun. Um, they're going to win some games. But again, I, I think going back to overpaying, Boovy at 10.75 crore, that is very toppy. Like that's the most he could have possibly expected to take home. Um, he's an old man and he's he was a great IPL bowler six or seven years ago. And he's not somebody that you're going to get a full season out of. I'd be very surprised. The bowl, it, there's, no, there's nobody that you throw the ball to in the RCB squad and you think, gun. The Shara won't play enough. You know how much I love the Shara. He's the one. I think 1.6 is mega cheap for him if he's the same price as Romario Shepard that can't bowl. Um, I think I think he's a steady bit of business, the Shara, but they need to find a way of getting him in the team. And when you've got Tim David, Phil Salt, Livingston and Hazelwood, how does he get in the team? I I assume you you pick him over Hazelwood would be my guy. What, what, what's your thoughts yeah. on this thing? <laughs> uh, I don't think they'll do that. Having paid twelve point five crore for Hazelwood, I really like a lot of what they've done. But it's the same question with RCB: is where's the death bowling at? Who are you going to turn to um, bowl at the death and isn't going to get carted? I see if Boovy's the guy. I see him getting carted. I see Hazelwood getting carted. We know Tashara loves to bowl three in the power play. Uh, but that middle order, as Rob said, you know, coming off a Coley Salt opening partnership and Livingston, Jitesh, David slash Bethel, Krunal, I really like that. Um, I love the buy of Bethel at 2.6 crore. Uh, yeah, I think that they, in Gidi, they picked up late for a crore, who's a decent backup who can do bits with the slower balls. Um, I think they look better than they did last year. 
Um, should we move on to Sunrisers? Um, they, from a shrunk perspective, they had quite a a auction. Um, they also so they brought Kamindi Mendes in. They brought Brian Cast. They brought Ishan Malinga in. Brian Cast isn't shrunk, but he was on my list uh, when I looked at it. He's from Durham, I believe. Um, they, I mean, they they're just trying to kind of fix the issues that they did well for them last year on the team that basically did well for them last year. Right, right, Rob? Um, yeah. They, their main issue last time was that they didn't have any spinners that were any good. And they haven't solved that because they spent money on Chahar. Um, I think, again, Zampa is a guy that at 2.4 is cheap. How do you get him into the side? I think they, they should probably find a way of getting him in the side. But Travis Head and Klassen are absolute bankers. Cummins obviously is as well. I think you can you can find a way to get him in the side. If you can get Zampa in the side, maybe, maybe he plays on the spinnier decks. That's fine. I don't think I think Rahul Chahar would be on my list of bad purchases for three point two. That's a lot for somebody who has declined every year that I've watched him. Um, they've got an ad cap, which is really funny. But they're they're a team that have a great strategy, which is absolutely murder the power play and then see how you're getting on and then carry on smashing it. And I love that. And they've got players that buy into that. I think Kishan is a really interesting buy for them. He's somebody that we know can do it. And it's about time he got towards his peak and, you know, put the PlayStation controller down before games and stuff and bloody concentrated. Like, he can play, Kishan. And some of those starts that Abhishek and Head give SRH, to say to, say to Kishan, go on, just mow everything in that arc that you've got. Just, just let's see your follow through. To give him total license, rather than making him open for Mumbai and... With Rohit, who wasn't trying very hard to score runs back then um, at a decent strike rate, putting pressure on him and all that stuff. Just let him loose in a in a team full of lunatics and see what he can do. That could be real fun. Um, Nitish Kumar Reddy is showing that he is improving massively. Like, this is a proper team. And I actually think the Harshal, Patel and Shami, if, Sh- if Shami can get fit, for 18 combined, considering some of these purchases that have gone on, considering Boovie's like 11, that's a really good bit of business. Like, Harshal was a proper weapon last time he he's both of those are on the decline they're not guys that we're going to see in four years time thinking what a great bit of business they are but right now i i think and we all love kamindu and no, and he never gets out in any format so that's one thing that, you know he can fight fires if they need him to my, my my worry about it is is i think they might have brought him more as a spinner looking at the the kind of social media messaging they've put out and i'm not like I think he's he's your kind of third or fourth choice spinner. He's not somebody you're going to be throwing the ball to to hold up overs, as it were, in this format. Yeah, I think that again, it, it happened last year, and they got they went very deep in the tournament. Um, they didn't have a spinner, and they've got even less spinners now by the looks of it. Because Chaha for me is a bad idea um for bowling four overs like a couple of times last year he just totally lost it because he bowls kind of strange deliveries any like his natural setup is strange he hasn't got a dependable repeatable action right so when he gets it wrong he gets carted um but they don't really care they're like if you score 220 that's not enough is it let's go and they're a really fun team i i love their tactic i love the way they set up but I disagree with the policy of we don't need any spinners because it's very hard to win the IPL without a spinner. It really is. And nobody that, unless they play Zampa every time, which really, if Kamindu doesn't play, you can you can play Zampa nearly nearly every game with, with Klass and Head and Cummins as the other three. I mean, that looks like a good side to me if they do that. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm I'm interested to see if Kamindu or Z- like which of the two they go with. It might be a horses for courses. It might be a case of if they think their batters are in good form, then you probably don't need to have Kamindu in there and bring in a more specialist spinner. What's your thoughts on this squad, Nick? Yeah, I mean, it's probably the most exciting top four in the league, isn't it? Head, Abhishek, Kishan, Klaassen. Uh, are they a little bit light on death hitting, assuming that Kamindu is there on the bench? They've got NKR, but then they've got some fairly inexperienced guys, the likes of Abhinav, Aniket Varma. I wonder if that's the one area where if you can get through that top four, you might have some opportunities there. And yeah, 
I agree with Rob on Chahar that he's not the player I thought he was going to be three or four years ago. And um, whether their spin bowling is a bit of a weakness, but I think this might be the time that we see Zampa play a full IPL season and take a lot of wickets. Uh, yeah, I like what they've done on the whole. Shami obviously is an injury concern, but uh, I think when you look at the money that was being paid for Arshdeep, Shami and Harshal combined for 18 crore is pretty good business. Uh, just before we move on, we should have a word about Ishama Linga because he's, um, I think, the third or fourth Sri Lanka player who's now been selected for the IPL before his debut for Sri Lanka. He's kind of had a quite a, a impressive kind of six to nine months leading into this. Um, he's kind of almost, it feels like, come out of nowhere to be actually somebody who a lot of Sri Lanka fans are really excited about. And now he's got to go himself the big bag in the IPL. Hopefully he gets a chance at some stage. I'm told he could be pretty handy in, in, the, in the last in the death overs. Um, I mean, if he can make a name for himself for being a death over bowler, then he'll be in the big bags in the next few years. Um, and thanks and well done to Sunrises for taking a punt on him. Um, as you move to KKR, defending champions, um, they, <laughs> what, what do you think of the squad they've assembled, uh, Rob? Well, firstly, the, the thing that sticks out is, as much as I love Venki, because he's you know he's he's a thinking man's cricketer and he can do lots of stuff. What was he twenty three point seven five? I mean that's ridiculous. Yeah, twenty three point seven five. That is ridiculous. That's the right? worst buy in IPL history, yeah, I reckon. That's, that's um that's that's double what he's worth. Is is basically it that he he went for twice as much as he should have done, and you can say he's multifaceted, but his bowling is largely crap. And he what I like about him is he can take on many roles with the bat and he, he's not selfish or anything like he seems like an absolute lad but does that get you an extra 10 crore for being a great guy don't know um yeah he's really clever ashwin's really clever um I, I don't get it i don't know why he's gone for so much like i know he's indian and that probably doubles your standard price compared to an overseas player for obvious reasons but i think he's probably they probably played twice as much for him as they should have done however they have got some. They've still got that Rinku Russell Romandeep carnage at the back end. Um, there's no way that Narayan can bat how he batted last season. I still don't understand how that happened. I watched every single innings and I have no idea how he scored any runs, let alone 400 or whatever it was. Um, I, ca I cannot work that out. The Norkia is not Norkia. I think he went cheaper than I thought he would go for. But I think the cat is a bit out the bag now. Like he's not the guy that turned up three or four years ago. Um, since injuries, he can be just a bowling machine on easy mode a lot of the time now. And on some of the roads that we see, he is going to get murdered. So I would rather have Spencer Johnson, who I think has a higher ceiling um, right now. Aurora, yeah, fine. But Chakravarti is getting better and better. Like He's a banker now nowadays. And it was only the start of the last, last IPO where they're saying he might not even get in the side. Like He's, he's a proper gun now. They're gonna win a lot of games. They're really fun. They're, you can pick holes in it though. If you go like, are these good buys? People like Moeen at two, Gerbaz at two. Like Gerbaz is a fine over. Like Rodman Powell, pretty good. One point five to have him sat on your bench. That's that's a lot of experience, and he can take spinners apart in the middle. The interesting one for me was that they got Umran Malik really cheap, and for a guy that can bowl ninety four miles an hour, zero point seven five. You know, we were all. Um, on the bandwagon of, of, you know, giving him a bit of a hard time when he turned up and just went for 12 and over every time he bowled in the power play. But the guy can bowl 94 miles an hour. If they can get hold of him, he's still quite young. If somebody can get hold of him in that setup and turn him into a, into a weapon, I think that is a great gamble at 0.75. So I don't know where Rahani fits in. If he does, Ragavanchi is not the full ticket right now, but the death hitting is outrageous. Once again, it's a side that you look down and you go, where's the death bowling coming from? Because Andre Russell isn't the answer. Like he keeps telling everybody that he's not the answer for death bowling because he keeps going for 12 and over, but he keeps getting picked for teams and bowling death. So I, I don't understand that one either. Yeah, where's the death bowling in that setup? Don't, can't see it. Um, Harshit Rana is going to have to do a lot of heavy lifting, I think. Uh, when you when you see this squad, right, and and you can see it in a few, there's a few other squads that will come to that that feel like this as well. I'm really surprised at this point in the IPL's life that they the owners 
haven't done away with the auction because what's it just feels like they've they've spent a whole lot of cash early on on a player they've desperately wanted, massively overpaid for, and then they're suddenly scrambling about at the back end, having to to fill their squad up with with players that are, I'm not saying they're bad cricketers. I love Moen Ali, but he probably wasn't high up on their list of players that they thought they wanted to bring in. Um, but and that and and as 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 exciting as the auction could be at points, you kind of feel if there was a trading system, mm. it might be more beneficial for for the teams. I like may may maybe may there's something I'm missing here. I don't know, Nick. What's your thoughts on KKR squad and also um, the auction in general? Nothing, nothing biggie. Yeah, over there. I, abs- <laughs> I absolutely love the drama of the auction. Uh, but it's hard to kind of deny the fact that there's an amateurishness about it, right? Like, thank you going for 23 crore. I understand the market dynamics mean Indian players are in demand because every team's got to have seven of them. But where would you rank him if you were going to rank power rank batters in the IPL? Where would Venkatesh? I, I don't think he'd be in anyone's top 20. And for a team to spank, I don't know what, almost 20% of their budget on him is really strange. Uh, I don't see KKR doing as much as they did last year. As Rob said, Narayan had a freak year. I can't see him doing that again. QDK is probably his opening partner, has been cool for a couple of seasons. Uh, Dre Russ is ageing. Uh, yeah, I just, I'm a bit, I'm not sold on KKR. I do agree with Rob, though, that Umran Malik was arguably i think the bargain of the whole auction at 0.75 i couldn't believe when he was passed up the first time and i mean you think yeah it's a couple of years ago that he was tearing up in those middle overs at sunrisers and i think that we could still see that again from him um should we move on to punjab kings um under the guidance of ricky ponting they've decided to spend their money on five Australian players, um, they, they've gone for like a full rebuild. What's your kind of take on, on what you think they have put together here, Rob? Madness. Um, it was madness last time, and it's more <laughs> madness. I, I don't. I feel a bit sorry for. Well, I know I don't feel sorry for Ricky Ponting because he's one of the great cricket in minds. But if if IPL stuff is his legacy, then you, he has to be considered an idiot because what was going on at Delhi last time. Delhi ended up with quite a good team by accident last IPL. The stuff that, that they just bought loads of old injured people at the auction. And then when they had to send them all home, they ended up with Fraser McGurk, who went on a heater for a few games and they actually looked all right. But that was a shot. I'm not having it that Ponting's making any of these decisions because, again, ludicrous over- overpayments going on for players that you just wouldn't necessarily want in your. Like Shreyas here, fine. Like he's good at cricket, but is he. Is he worth more than all the others? The answer is definitely no, because he doesn't get in India's best T20 side, for example. So how the hell is he 27 crore? That's that's bananas cash. On the flip side, I think Maxwell's mega cheap at 4.2. And why won't people... I know he had a shocker last year, but with Glenn Maxwell, that can happen, right? Maxwell is one of those people. He's also produced some of the greatest innings of all time in white ball cricket. So Annie can bowl, and he's a gun in the field. Maxwell at 4.2 is as good a buy nearly as Ear at 27 is bad. So maybe that cancels out. But then they just go, well, if you're Australian, we're buying you. I think Shashank keeping hold of him, good idea. Lockie was cheap, but is Lockie the the non-injured version of Lockie that can bowl 93 miles an hour is a absolute force. But I haven't seen him for a long time. I think Arsti for 18 crore is actually quite good to keep hold of him because he is getting better and better. He's had a great year in T20s. He's got as many wickets as Bumrah. Um, but then Chahal, that is overpaying 18 crore because at Rajasthan, his job, he bowled maybe later than we would have thought, but he kept wicket hunting last year. And by that, I mean, he was just tossing it up, trying to get caught long on when the rate was getting out of control instead of trying to beat batsmen and bowl properly and keep runs down. He was just looking for wickets and tossing it up. And he is, a, again, talking about multifaceted cricketers, he is as one-dimensional as it gets. He can only bowl, he cannot bat, and he cannot field. 
that is loads of cash for him. So Punjab may have made spectacularly bad decisions for the last few years. The funnest one was when they they were actually the first team to go to hell with everything else. We're just going to smash everything. But then they bowled Odin Smith at the death. So that ripped all that up. Right. <laughs> so they're, they're thinking maybe we could do with bowlers now. But on paper, if you've got an attack, maybe let's say Lockie's fit. That's that's a big if. Lockie, Arshdeep, Chahal, probably Harpreet, Bra and a bit of Maxwell with somebody like Marco Johnson. That's a lot better than a lot of the teams here. Um, who's going to open with Prab Simran? Does Stoin go at the top? Like, I don't really know. Like, I, I, I couldn't tell you. I'd have a much harder time picking a starting 11 from Punjab squad than I would some of the others, I think. Um, but they will be fun because they're always fun, Punjab. And you must have teams in the IPL that are totally unpredictable and are sometimes terrible and sometimes amazing. Just like the, the one gone by, they chased 260 in one of the games and they were utterly um, deplorable in others. So I'm looking forward to watching them, but I couldn't pick you the starting 11 out of that that massive great big squad. Nick, any anything to add that Rob hasn't... <laughs> No, just I like it's a bizarre mess, and I thought it was a really weird strategy that they came into the day with the biggest stack by far, and they had a chance to uh, manipulate other teams with that position, and then they spend twenty seven on Treas Iyer straight off the bat, and eighteen on Arshdeep, and their big stack advantage is totally gone. Uh, but yeah, I agree that Maxwell's a really great bargain at what was it four five crore or something, uh, and I mean look. As much of it as it is a mess, they've got um, one of the best spinners in the league. They've got a good young opener in Prad Simran. They've got a uh, sort of repeat finalist captain, good anchor in Shreyas. They've got Maxwell and Stoinis. They've got Marco Jan Janssen. There's something exciting there. But um, yeah, I thought Shreyas Iyer at 26 and a bit crore uh, is bizarre with a career strike rate of 127 in the IPL. I, I think it's quite bizarre because I think of all, of all the IPL teams, I think Punjab are the ones that come in for the most amount of ridicule, right? Um, the, and the fact that they've let Ricky Ponting come in and well, I'm not saying he's a good coach or bad coach, right? I, I'm not a cricketer. I don't know what it's like to be coached in, in franchise cricket. But what they've come away with when we in our kind of pre in the last episode we did we thought that they might have a strategy here to try and build something mm. exciting and it kind of feels like they they've just been I don't I don't want to say bargain bin shopping but but it's it's kind of like he's been calling up his old mates and saying who's who's going to be available to come down it feels very much if if I was going to compare it to football it feels very much like Harry Redknapp's time at West Ham doesn't it it's like who's available <laughs> get them in like, oh, he's made a couple of IPL finals. Get him in. Oh, he's a good player. The big show. Get him in. Um, yeah, I, I and, agree. And right. So they. Sorry, sorry, Mark. They had um, uh, uh, some friends of mine, uh, analysts, full time analysts, and they did some work with Punjab at one of the auctions a few years. But I think Cumblay was there. Was that right? Was Cumblay Punjab? Um, yeah. And ba basically, I think it was Cumblay. They had all this strategy and numbers and geekery that was like this is what you need you must get one of these people and you know here's the shortlist here's the numbers we need a containing spinner or we need a banger at the end or whatever it was and all the guys at punjab were like this is what we're paying you for this is great stuff thanks for the shortlist we totally agree brilliant strategy and i think it was cumberland it might have been somebody else but basically the coach was like i'm, I'm all for this sounds great and they didn't go anywhere near them because whoever it was that made the decision was like, well, I like that guy, though. And then the paddle keeps going up. And and if you look around at the analysts for these teams, a lot of them have, the, have their heads in their hands when the paddles are going up because they're like, well, we didn't say this guy. We don't need one of them. Why are you doing the whole bank on this bloke? And it feels a bit like Ponting is the co It didn't look like he was having much of a say here other than the fact that everyone's Australian. And I think English <laughs> might, might be really, really good. Um, he's... He's certainly good at um, ODIs and stuff right now. English might be. Again, how do you pick the four overseas here? If if you don't pick an overseas, but I mean, it's probably Janssen, Maxwell, Stoin, and somebody else. Probably. Yeah. Hardy's and there. And I'd say probably Bartlett's English. Bartlett's there. <laughs> sorry. Sorry, Nick. What did you say? I said probably English for the fourth to open with yeah. Brad Simran, maybe. 
Yeah, I think that's that's a better answer than Stoin opening in India. Have Stoin coming in and bashing it at the back. But yeah, they're they're a crazy bunch, Punjab. But I'm very pleased to see that that is continuing. <laughs> and long may it. Long may it yeah. continue. Um, right, moving on. Lock now, Super Giants. Um, Rishpal Pant is the most expensive player in IPL history. Uh, we kind of predicted that last time around. I think basically everyone in the whole world predicted that. I'm not going to uh, pretend that, that that was some exclusive that we had. Um, I, I, I've i been following them closely because nominally they're kind of my team uh, the last few since since they joined. I actually think it's a kind of reasonably well-run franchise. And they've kind of lacked big hitters, um, or, or people have hit consistently at least. Um, and I think they've kind of tried to go out and kind of solve that a little bit, slightly. Um, and also, most importantly, part ways with, with KL, because that relationship had totally broken down as well. Um, Rob, we'll go to you first, as we always do in this uh, on this episode. What your, what's your take on this squad? Um I think it's better than it was because there's more intent merchants in it. And that was my big problem with Lucknow last time is the amount of time. There was one game and it's not all KL's fault because obviously the relationship with the owners broke down and, and quite publicly by the end. But they were just set up to, to kind of get below par and didn't really have a, an above par bowling attack. That's just a rubbish strategy. And other teams last year left Lucknow behind. So the correct answer is rip it up and start again and get some people that bash it in. Now, let's say the top four is Markram, who's having a bad trot, like a really bad trot. Let's say the top four is Markram, Marsh, Pant, Puran. It sounds great on paper. And Pant, Puran is about as good, let's say they're three and four, as you're going to get in world cricket right now. That is um, unbelievable. But Marsh hasn't scored a run in the IPL through a long sample size. He's never done it in the IPL. And Markram is having a bad trot. They got him cheap. They could open with other people. But no names are jumping out at me. Badoni is a guy that has gone up and down the order. Um, he's shown glimpses of brilliance. I think he's, he got a 50 very early on in his IPL career and everyone thought, well, this is the guy. But they've given him a really hard job because he's open sometimes. He's batted eight. He's They've thrown in the ball. Like They don't really know what to do with him. Um, Samad and Shabazz are two guys that are wildly inconsistent. Um, for some reason, was was it SRH last time that had Shabazz and kept bowling him in the power play, which like, if you ever look at numbers, there's a massive red flag next to him saying, do not bowl him in the power play, whatever you do. <laughs> and they kept doing it. He kept going for 20 and they did it again. Like, I, I didn't understand that. Shabazz is someone, again, on paper, when that side clicks, they're awesome. The big question mark for me is one of my favourite players, Mayank Yadav, because he proved beyond any doubt last year that he just could not bowl two games in a row and he was I think he was played four times and he walked off injured in two of them and he was man of the match in the other two and he is an absolute joy to watch bowling if he's fit 11 crores is a bargain if he plays three games they've done a lot of the tank on him and if he's not in the side the backup bowling Mossin Khan maybe doesn't look all that to me um I think they're much better now, but when on paper, if if they can get Markram and Marsh in some kind of form, that top four's lights out. And then Miller, long pedigree in the tournament. I didn't think he was expensive at 7.5, considering some of the numbers we've been talking about today. I don't see them winning the IPL, but I don't think they're anywhere near as bad as they were last time. I, I kind of feel, I don't know what you think, Nick, if, if their middle order can, can find form, then I like to think that maybe they might get into the... The business end of it, Nick. I don't know, man. I I hate Marsh and Miller as an opening pairing, and you know this time last year or well last March, Marsh was dropped pretty quickly by Delhi. Uh, I wonder if we see Pant at the top of the order for them because it also breaks up the sort of back to back left handers in Pant and Puran. Uh, but yeah, three point four crore for Mitchell Marsh here was the standout bad buy for me. Give me Prithvi Shaw at seventy five lakh any day of the week over that. Uh, Where is he? Um, Where is Prithvi? He's not. He, he didn't get a team. He's, he's, yeah, I, I think that's bizarre. I still, I think he's got more upside than Venkatesh Ayer. I've nailed my flag to the Prithvi Shaw mask many a time though, so I'll leave it there. Um, but yeah, uh, Avesh Khan, a decent bit of business. If Mayank Yadav can stay fit, they look drastically different. But 
Um, I don't love the look of this team, and I think they're relying a lot on Nicky Poran to do wonderful things um, for them to be anywhere approaching really good. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm hopeful as a nominal fan. <laughs> I say that. There's about five teams I pretend to support. Um, should we move on to Delhi Capitals? Uh, this is a, another team that kind of muddled their way through a bit last season. I think the key thing is here is they held on to a player, me and Rob affectionately called Fraggle Rock. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, I want to say, have, have they brought in the new captain with KL? Like, what is who's going to captain this side? Rob, what's your take on this squad? And Good. how far can they go? Good. Yeah. I, uh, that's 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 my summary. Thanks for asking the question. Goodbye. No, I I think when you see some of the ludicrous cash that has been spread around here, it was only three years ago that KL was top run scorer in the IPL at a strike rate of one thirty. Like the guy can play. There's no question about that. If his directive is to just hold up an end, he can do that. But it looks crap, and everyone gets on his case. Those days are over. You don't need somebody that scores at strike rate one ten and doesn't kick on at the end. It used to be that the version of KL that was 40 or 40 could end up getting 80 or 55. It used to be that guy. Um, I think at 14 crore, he's half a Shreyas here. That is a good bit of business. Um, what they do with him, I don't know. But in this in this side here, when you have got Fraggle McGurkin at the other end, you need someone that can at least you know stay in for an over or two because whilst he was unbelievable when he came in because all the old men went home injured last time, there's no way that that guy can do it every every time for a 14 match season in in the in the like whatever you call it the starting games or the the normal season 14 games is too many times for someone like Fraser McGurk to come off 14 in a row he's going to fail a lot he's found international cricket very hard i don't know if he's the guy but he's an unbelievable watch but stubbs maybe the most improved bat in world cricket in the last 18 months he's up there like stubbs went from someone who i thought was a bit of a flat track bully to being really good at lots of different formats and lots of different batting positions. I think Stubbs is great and 10 crawl for him, pretty good. Harry Brook is, he's got 100 in T20s, but I remember his uh, season for Hobart Hurricanes and he was awful and he was largely awful in T20s. And, and he's somebody that you see him smashing the ball everywhere in a test match. And you think, won't he be great at T20s? And maybe he will, but so far he isn't. He's not the guy. So whilst I've said they were good and then bashed a lot of their players, I think they have a very... Their bowling attack looks rounded, sensible. They've got loads of experience on the bench, which I think is quite a good thing. Like They've got people like Faf, Chimera, um Surely Karen Nair's just there to talk to people. Mohit Sharma. Like, <laughs> these guys can help a squad at, along along the way in a long tournament. And Natarajan, Mukesh Kumar, Cole Deep's a total gun, Axar, and Stark. Like, that's an actual bowling attack, right? They've got all the bases covered there. That's a proper bowling attack. Whether you get the Mitchell Stark that played the whole season last time or the one that played in the playoffs, because they were two totally different players, is a... Uh, an interesting question. Everyone seems to love Rizvi, but they got him quite cheap. And my favourite player in the whole of the Delhi setup, despite loving Fraggle, is Ashutosh. And I thought that he was cheap too. Do you know what I mean? I thought he was cheap. 3.8. Ashutosh is Target a Target of the whole thing for me, Rob. Yeah. I love Ashutosh. Right? He's Smashatosh. He is super fun. He can get 24 off four, and he genuinely can. And there aren't many people that can do that. And he is one that can. He's... He's got a lot of batting ahead of him and he's going to get the license to go, right, show us what you can do. He's a total gun. I absolutely love him. I think he's a brilliant buy. Nick? I love this team, man. I've always had a soft spot for Delhi and I saw people ripping into them. But I think if you're going to build a team around KL Rahul in the IPL, this is the way to do it, right? You surround him with high strike rate, high impact batters. And you look at that potential top order of... Rahul, JFMG, Abhishek, Brooke, Stubbs, Ashatosh. I mean, that is like money. I want to watch that team play. <laughs> uh, I think possibly where they could come unstuck is if they get, you know, an injury to Stark, as Rob alluded to, that could leave them a little shorthanded. Uh, 
but yeah, it's a nice left-handed bowling attack, isn't it? Stark, Natarajan, Kuldeep. Um, oh yeah, I like what they've done. Samir Rizvi is a young player with high upside. I think Ashutosh has got high upside. Harry Brook hasn't done it yet, but I think he could still get really good at T20s. Uh, I love this team and I was sceptical about KL's stock coming into the auction. But I think when you see the two eyes and Pant for well north of 20, KL, uh, whatever he was, 14, looks like a stone cold bargain to me. Um, I, I think this is the team you two have been most enthusiastic about thus far. Um, <laughs> and I saw quite may, a lot of may, people online slagging them off. Yeah. I, I think Brooks an interesting purchase as well. I, th- I think uh, what Rob was saying about Brook, I kind of felt the same way. I think I said that a few days ago as well. And I, I was starting to wonder, maybe I was the only person in the world who'd seen it. Maybe I'd miss, miss seen it. Um, but I, th- I think it's it's interesting how many English players do get picked up who aren't necessarily, who, who look good in different formats or haven't quite done it in T20 cricket, but still seem to get a go at it. And obviously, I'm, I'm over the moon that Shamir is back in the squad as in the league as well. Um, so we move to Rajasthan Royals. Um, at points last season, Rob, I thought they were the team that were going to win it. Um, totally. And they've they've gone away, and I think they've tried to, as I suppose all of them have done, they've tried to fix some of the issues that kind of because I felt ultimately they fell down because they were just a little bit too one-dimensional. And when things were, were when they weren't in control of the game, they they didn't have the kind of players to get them back into it. Um, don't know what your take is on that and also this squad. So uh, my, my thing for Rajasthan last time was they relied incredibly heavily on the starting eleven, And when they were one injury away from the full crisis all the time, and that's a really hard thing to do for a season as long as the IPL is, it's normally 14 games in the group and then, and then it's the business end. Um, I don't massively think they've solved that. I think players like Carter K is a great buy for 0.3. That's nothing. Um, Faruqi pretty cheap for, for two crore. Like he can, he's a very good opening bowler these days, Faruqi. Um, And I think in terms of, like I've always had Rajasthan and I, I go back to the first IPL as a thinking team. I think they've lost their best thinking player, which is Ashwin, because Ashwin can do the firefighting thing where you've lost a few wickets. He protects, you know, he stops, he elongates your batting order by coming up the order and going, OK, I'll just get 15 off 15 and we'll see where we are. And then he tries to hit everything for six. Like he's, he was a great player for Rajasthan. So going back to Chennai is interesting for him. I think, again, on paper... Some of the buys they've got are unbelievably good. Hasaranga is an obvious one. For some reason, he's not rated as an IPL guy. He's not He's not done anything in the IPL yet, but he's not been given a long enough go. Hasaranga at 5.25 is nothing. I'm quite against... I love Joffre Archer, but he's not the Hobart Hurricanes Joffre Archer. Going like Harry Brook probably won't be the Hobart Hurricanes Harry Brook. But Joffre Archer is about half an archer right now. If they can get a 75% archer, then... He's a great buy. I think Desh Pandey is a wonderful bit of business. He's he he's turned his extreme volatility of getting loads of wickets and always going for loads of runs. He's changed that right down now. He can be quite dependable, Desh Pandey, and he gets poles. He was 6.5 for an Indian, what is he, 28? Great, great buy. Sandeep, to retain him for four, is wonderful. That is a cracking bit of business. Thikshana, 4.4. Thikshana, say it quietly, he can bat a little bit now as well. Like he, he can actually swing the bat around. Um, I'm not going to talk <laughs> about that too much. But he can bowl in multiple phases, Thikshana. He's 4.4 and he'll play as well. And on paper, once again, though, the starting 11 is great. Mafaka is probably there for the ride. But the thing we have to talk about, I mean, Jaiswell and Sampson, just quietly, that is an opening partnership. Um because Sampson has done the thing recently that we were always hoping that one day he would do and has stopped scoring pretty 30s where you think he's the best player ever and then getting out. He's actually turning them into international hundreds. He ha- Sure, he's gone like duck hundred, duck hundred or whatever it was, but he's shown that he's got the big one in him and that's massive for them. Um, I think Jaiswal had a season off in terms of his, his 
undoubted ability last season. Hetmeyer's again got to do all the heavy lifting as as your death hitter. Parag is a two good games a season guy. They they need to get more out of him, but they got more out of him last time. But they signed a thirteen year old child for a hundred thousand quid. <laughs> what the hell is going on here? Right? They talk about the IPL as much as you want, but you cannot miss the fact that that happened. Right? He's a thirteen year old child has gone for a hundred thousand quid, and yes, he scored. I think it was against Australia, a fifty eight ball ton. Yeah, at under nineteen level, at the age of thirteen, that is sick. And he's got a triple hundred and he's done well. He's actually played first class cricket and he's 13 years of age, right? So maybe he's Sachin too. We don't know. He might be. But what what is that doing for him? What is that doing for the franchise? What is that doing for people that are sat there? Um, you know, what's Joffre going to do around the 13 year old kid? Like, it's a bit weird for me. I'm not, I, don't, I can't quite wrap my head around it. What do you guys reckon about? The thirteen-year-old being actual, actually signed for actual cash. He's not got. He's not the um, Arjun Tendulkar, you know, Nepo Award. Like he has to play because his dad's a coach. It's none of that. He's he's being picked on pure cricketing ability at the age of thirteen for a hundred and eight thousand UK pounds. Uh, uh, Nick, you can I, go first on this. It's super bizarre, and I agree that the dressing room dynamic is something that is like going to be really strange. One thing I would say is I did watch highlights of his knock against Australia A, Australia under 19s ahead of the auction, and he was smoking everybody for six, and he looks like a big <laughs> unit. So, without wanting to cast shade on the young man, I'd like to see a birth certificate, and <laughs> I wonder if. Uh, this is a buy that they've got, you know, like, I don't know, locking him up and that could he be good? Could he be ready two years down the line? But it would look certainly like for now, Mufaka and Vibav are along for the ride and they've spent, I think, combined 2.6 crore on them, which is not an uh, inconsiderable amount. Uh, so, yeah, that's a bit strange. I love the double pickup of Deeks and Hasaranga for 10 crore between them. I think that's really good business. Uh, but I was surprised by the Drew Jarrell um, retention, less so by Hetmeyer and Parag, but I thought they were both slightly overpaid. And I do still think that if you can get Jaiswal and Sampson early with who have they got, Rana, Parag, Jarrell, Hetmeyer, uh, it looks a long way towards getting 200 if you're kind of 15 for two, say, with those top two gone. So, yeah, I wonder about that middle order. Uh, personally, for me, if I was involved in this side, I would not want a 13-year-old anywhere around a full-grown men's <laughs> team. Um, <laughs> f- f- yeah, it, 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 it's odd. The, the thing I will say as well, which I think makes it even odder, is that Celebrity Works much is much more intense in in South Asia, in, in, in India, not necessarily all of South Asia, um, but in India than it is in almost the rest of the world. And I just can't imagine what that kid is waking up to every morning being called the next action, the being sold for 100K in the, in the IPL, like money that, let, let's be brutal here, most people around him, most people in the world can't have any kind of concept off and he's just waking up one morning and someone's decided to give him that to play cricket. I'm not saying he doesn't deserve it, but I'm also saying that there's a kind of duty of care situation here that, I have no idea who the people are around him. Maybe they are looking after him well. Who knows? But it's a weird, weird situation. I, I in in general, if I was going into the, to the auction, I just wouldn't pay any consideration. And may, maybe I'm wrong in this because maybe Mike can maybe might start but end up in the top scorer in the league. But I just wouldn't pay any consideration to to developing players. We've seen that just be an absolute disaster for Mumbai Indians the last few seasons. Um, try and try these kind of long, long punts, as it were. But you, th- there is, I can't see what the incentive is for these teams to do to do such things. So, yeah, I think it's surprising. Anyway, well, we surely the there's side? no way he plays a game. Surely there's no way he plays a game this year, right? Can't see it. Well, like, you do get, you do. It. If they if they storm off and and end up in you know t- one or two with two or three kind of regular season games to go, then you never know. They might try and throw him on. Like, I mean, I can't see it happening, but I couldn't see him getting a contract, and he's got a contract. So... Yeah, and they don't have a huge I've, amount of depth in their batting. If you look at their bench batting, it's Shubham Dube, him, 
Um, yeah, that's it. All rounder I haven't heard of. Yudvis Singh. So yeah, uh, who knows? Yeah, but it, it's totally bizarre. Um, uh, Gujarat Titans. Uh, Josh Butler ha- um, has been picked up by them. Uh, their attention should be Gill, Sai Sadarshan. Uh, what do you make of this squad, uh, Rob? Very similar, isn't it? I think obviously Butler, great signing. Um, Gill and Butler. There's a lot of good opening partnerships, but Gill and Butler's another really good one, isn't it? Um, yeah. Sadarshan, he went from the most dependable guy in terms of betting, where I just bet over 20 and a half every single game he ever played, and then unders when he got to about 30, because as soon as he tried to whack it, he got out. But now he seems to have added that to his game where he can go on. Sadarshan's a very good number three. I like Sharik Khan. He showed last year that you can, when they bought him up the order, he smashed the spin around. He has got game, Sharik Khan, and he is a guy that has had some enormous price tags next to him um, in years gone by. Bowling attack, no, not for me. I think Rabada obviously has the pedigree, but he's not been great in in recent IPLs. Um the Siraj is not a good T20 bowler. I don't think he likes playing T20s. I think he's one good game and then four howlers. Like if he gets it moving early, he can rip through sides. He's got some of the best IPL spells ever. But the thing people don't talk about is that he's mostly crap. Uh, he just happens to bowl incredibly well when the, when the ball's doing something at the start. Prasad Krishna, um, again, loads of potential, but he's injured all the time. I like the pickups on the bench. Like if you look at, probably Phillips at two crawl like he can do loads of stuff um Gerald Curtsy is a vastly improving guy and he's always a wicket threat he needs to work out how to keep the run rate down a bit but he can bat as well Curtsy like he's he's a good guy to have around for a couple of crawl um I think their bench strength is stronger than others they've got a couple of old um funny people in which I always like Ishant Sharma's still somehow getting <laughs> um paid money to play in the IPL uh, and they were like, last time he actually did all right. And I was like, you've bowled two overs, Ishan. Can you please bowl a third? And he's like, no, I'm absolutely knackered. Come on, two overs is plenty. <laughs> Sub me back off again. I don't fancy it. I think I think there are, I'm a bit, I don't see where the firepower is in the middle and at the back. If Sharug is up the order, which worked last year when they finally decided to do to do that with him, then who is it? Is it Rutherford? Like Tawati is, a, what, what is he? One game in 10 where he gets the most ludicrous win over the line maybe one in fifth well one a season isn't he to Atta? he's not a dependable guy um he you know he loves doing things that are impossible he's like to Atta, you know we need 19 and over now at what point do you think that the run rate is unattainable he's like not yet just let me nudge it around for a bit more and i'll get 28 off the last don't worry about it lads like he he's it's incredible that um he plays every game in the ipl ever that guy um They've got Rashi Khan, though, so that's fine. Like, Rashi Khan and Rabada is pretty scary, isn't it? If you can get Rabada going. Lots to like, but I I can't see them winning it. Uh, Nick, uh, just wouldn't get a take on the squad, but also Washington Sunder, because he's, he's one of my favourite players, but he's not had the best IPL recently. No, he hasn't had the best IPL at all, and I don't think he played a lot last year, did he, for Sunrisers? Uh he hasn't been consistent with ball or bat. Uh, I think Psyche Shaw at two crawl was a really good pickup from them. And as Rob said, Butler, Gill, Sadarshan, that's potentially the best top three in the league. You've got guys who are going to bat along there. And I think that does a lot of the heavy lifting for this team with a Phillips or a Rutherford. I like both of those guys. Rutherford's a guy who's been around for a long time, but seems to be finally making that step up towards being really good. Uh, you've got Tawati and Shahrukh, uh, Rashid. So I, I think there's plenty of firepower with the bat. My issue would be that, as Rob said, their seam bowling seems to be a bit boom or bust. And in Siraj and Rabadi, you've got two guys who are going to take wickets, but who can also go at tens. So whether they can score enough... Uh, is the question, but I'm quietly bullish, I'd say, about this team. I I like them, and Gujarat always seem to do well, don't they? They seem to be better than the sum of their parts. Uh, with is Solanke and Nero, isn't it? That's Gujarat. I get the two new franchises confused. Um, but yeah, yeah, I quite like it. <laughs> 
Um, I, I think in one of the Cricket 8 podcasts at the back end of the last season of IPL, me and Jared had a big tear-up about the size of Darshan. We had a tear-up about a few players, actually. <laughs> Uh, I, don't, I don't think Jared's not a fan, is he, Rob? You were, you were, you would have been in the room when this was happening. So, so yeah, he he loved his from a betting point of view. Like we say, we just backed over for his runs every time, and he always got them. Uh, but he hated the fact that he couldn't kick on. He didn't have even a fourth gear, let alone a fifth. But he towards the back end of the season, he got hundred, didn't he? At the end or ninety five or something. Yeah. To, to, yeah. Um, he he looked like the guy and. And I think he's a guy that should be coming into his prime right now, said Harson. He's been around a while, but he looks, I think he's a very good number three. Um, he can, he can also, if you need someone to fight a fire when there's wickets falling and just bat a bit of time, which occasionally you need in a T20, he's going out of the game. Um, he's as good as you're going to get at, at doing that, at just keeping the, the, the scoreboard ticking over and not losing his wicket. Um, I think very good cricketer, said Harson. Um, shall we go move to the final side, the one we haven't talked about? Uh, Mumbai Indians, uh, their retentions felt to me like they were all superstars. Sky, Rohit, Bumrah, uh, Til- well, Tilak Verma, probably not as much for a superstar as the rest. And of course, Hardik, they're, they're much loved and not in any way controversial captain. Uh, what do you make of the squad they put together, Rob? Um they, okay. they haven't done what they've normally done, which is try and kind of speculate on players. Though Arjun Tendulkar is in, and we do need to talk about that. <laughs> I was just going to say, don't ask me about Arjun Tendulkar, but um, obviously, <laughs> like, Nepotismo Award, I thought it was hilarious when he played last time, and they basically said, it's swinging, okay, we'll just score six off the first over, but please don't come back on, or we're going to hit you for 28. Uh, and they were like, uh, what do we do now? And they tried to bowl him in the middle after like two wickets had just fallen and then we never saw him again. He's he's definitely shouldn't be in the squad. It's really funny that he is. Um, fair play. Like, if you want Sachin around and to be affiliated with your franchise, you know, chuck, chuck him 30 lakhs. But he's, he's quite old now. Like, he's not a 19-year-old with a really high ceiling. He's somebody that's had a lot of goes and not really done it. Um I've heard stuff about his batting that I've never seen. It's funny. M- Mumbai do crazy things, but Bumrah is so much better than any other bowler in the world. It's a cheat code. If you've got Bumrah, you've kind of got three bowlers because he's all phases. He keeps the run down and he gets poles. Like, he's a freak. He's so good at cricket. He's the first, I would say, that is like we've ever had that is comfortably the best at what he does in all three formats. He is so good at cricket. And having that guy in your team means you cannot write them off. From a betting point of view, the market always absolutely loves Mumbai. Um, They will probably go off favourites for this IPL. And on paper, when you read the names out that you just read out, Mark, the the retention guys, you're like, well, of course, Hardik, Sky, Tilak, Rohit, uh, Bumrah, like the total, totally mate. Bolt is an expensive pickup, but you know he's really good at bowling in the power play. And that means that they might not have to bowl so much Jasper up front because he sometimes had to bowl two overs in the power play and that's a lot for him to bowl. So it's no longer Bumrah being the best bowler in the team by a million miles and everyone else is going for 14 and over. They've actually got Trent Bolt to do some power play bowling as well. I think they probably overpay, but that's fine. Deepak Chahar is a definite overpayment for somebody that is an injury nightmare. Um but some good experience on the bench. Like again, injury nightmare. But Reese Topley, if you do get two games out of him in the season, 0.75 crores, perfectly acceptable price to pay. He's got he's he's a good bowler, Reese Topley. He just can't say fit. And Santa's fine IPL in certain conditions. Decent guy to have around. Huge question marks. Will Jacks don't know. Like his knock when Cody was laughing at the other end last season was as good as you're going to see for hitting at the end of an innings. But he looks like he was going to go out every single ball for the first 25 balls that he faced against spin. And then he just went utterly mental. We know that Jax can do it, but Jax hasn't done it for a while now. He's not scored any runs for England for a while. Rohit, um, a bit creaky now. I love the fact that he changed from the boring low intent Rohit to the high intent Rohit last year. And that's what they need him to do. He's getting way too much cash for what he does, but fine. And you, Sky's one of the best players in T20 history. Um, 
Namandir they paid a lot for. He showed glimpses last season of a lot of like 200 strike rate 20s. Um, they're going to be a force, but they're going to be overrated. Like, again, you look at the spin and you go, where, what are they going to do? Are they going to spin anybody out? What is Khan Sharma going to play? Like, where's the where's the spin attack here for Mumbai? But they probably go, don't care. Look at all the bats. Look how fun it is. And we've got Hardik who can turn it on, you know, turn it on in the World Cup final, didn't he? Um, they're going to be they're going to be wildly overrated, but they're still really good. And any team, even if you've just got ten, you know, farmers turning up in their dungarees, that's got Jasprit Bumrah in their team, is going to be perfectly capable of taking wickets at important times and that's how you win T20 matches uh, Nick they've had a difficult few seasons but um, Mahela's back in the in the kind of head coach's chair and they've not done that thing that they've been doing a few, for the last few seasons where they've bought totally speculative buys here it looks like they've actually thought about what the 11's going to look like and who's going to who's going to perform in what roles maybe not necessarily so much in spin but have, have they got enough here to win it uh, I think I tentatively quite like what they've got. I mean, look, when you've got Tilak Varma and Surya Kumar Yadav in the middle order together, that's a really good start. And when you pair that with Jasper Bumrah, that's great. Uh, Trent Bolt, I agree with Rob Slight over pay considering that he's 35 but he's a power play beast at least he will be for this season how good he's going to be moving forward we don't know uh i think that will jacks and namandir as high striking uh big variants kind of guys are well suited with varma and sky in this team people seem to be really high on ala Gazanfar, the young Afghan spinner. So whether he could be a sort of future star is something to interesting to watch out for. Uh, slight, I mean, something that struck me was that they don't have a lot of keeping in this squad. I think they've got a choice between Ryan Rickleton, who has done really well in the SAT 20, but it's not the IPL, and whether you want him as one of your four overseas, or Robin Mins. So I don't know quite what they'll do there. Uh and I had another point that I was going to make, but it's completely gone out of my head. Gazamfar is a very interesting one, Nick. I wanted to talk about him because 4.8 crawl is a hell of a lot. Uh, how old is he? 18? Might have just turned 19. 18, and he, yeah. And he got, a, I watched it, he got a very good six foot against Bangladesh in an ODI, but they did kind of work him out quite quick. He got two for a few in the second and he got none for in the third. So he's a sort of guy that, yeah, you might throw him on and because no one's seen him before, he could be extremely successful in one or two games. We've seen lots of spinners do that. And he did get a 30 or 15 with the bat or something. So there's probably something there as well. And Afghanistan do have a habit of churning out teenagers that are unbelievably good at spinning the ball. Maybe he's awesome, but 4.8 crawl is the absolute top whack, isn't it? That's the, how how much was he expecting to get? He probably expecting unsold. Um, teams were sniffing around him last year, but 4.8 crore is loads of cash for him. And again, last year, Mumbai decided that we're not going to have any spinners and we don't care. Maybe he plays a few. Um, you can make, Because they've got such gun Indian bats, maybe they can afford to use up an overseas slot on him. That's a really interesting one. I forgot about him, so thanks for bringing him up. Oh, and I've remembered my the... point. Go on, Nick. No, sorry, my point I lost was they've also bought an overseas player who I've never heard of in Bevan John Jacob. Bevan. Yeah, so he's a Kiwi. Yeah, do you know anything about Bevan, Rob? Yeah, a bit, yeah. Um, I, if you'd have said... To me, I mean, I looked at the list of all the people available because I'm, you know, there's something wrong with my head. But I looked at all the list and I don't remember seeing his name. Uh, and I, if you'd have laid me 100 to 1 that he gets signed by an IPL team, I wouldn't have backed it. He is a guy that bats about six in the Kiwi domestic. The only one, Canterbury, isn't it? The only one I've, I, I think I might have watched him once. His numbers, which I'm looking at now, don't jump off the page compared to some people that they could have signed for nothing as, as overseas. He bats five, six, seven, and he got a 36 off 13. Great. 19 off 11. Great. 42 off 20. Great. And nothing else. And and that's a season in the 
whatever the Georgie Pie Super Mega Smash is called in New Zealand now, yeah. that ain't <laughs> real cricket, right? That is not real cricket. And for, for anybody that anybody that had him on their IPL bingo card, congratulations, you win the star prize. Well done. Bevan Jacobs is a, <laughs> is a big surprise for me. I don't know. Maybe he's awesome. Um, I think I've watched him bat once. It's it's a very funny signing. But yeah, hats off to Mumbai for for the most random name I think that could have been picked in this tournament. I I started up Mumbai kind a bit talking saying that they hadn't made speculative punts, but <clears throat> we end it with actually they t- totally have. Don't. So going to say Gazanfar. It's actually he did some bits in the LPL, didn't he? Um, yeah, he, he was. But was he playing in the LPL? This year, the yeah. one that we weren't able to watch because they weren't showing it. <laughs> yeah, the one that we had to watch through weird streams and get use Nord VPN and stuff, which don't sponsor us, but if they want to, we'll take their money um, <laughs> <laughs> to, to to watch. Yeah, he was doing bits in that. So I do think with all of this stuff, and we like we've talked about this on Murray End for, for quite a while now is that it's good that to see that there is a kind of path to the IPL if you go and do it in other franchise leagues and kind of get get a bit of consistency and can show what you're doing then you can find your way to this league now obviously Bevan's an absolute kind of left field pick here isn't it uh, guys we leave it there for today um, thanks for joining us Rob hopefully you'll come back on soon maybe we might end up talking a bit of big bash with you um, at some point uh, maybe we could do it in the middle of the night while well, one of the games is on and you're, you're having to watch it. I don't know if you stay up and watch cool. them still. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah, thanks for coming on. If you just finding us with a big bag, um, give us a follow, give us a like, tell all your friends about us, leave us your comments, who you think is the best buy of the IPL um, and which team you think is going to win it looking at the, the work that's been done. Before we auction. go, who's your guys buy of the auction? Buy of the auction? Or, yeah, like, what's the what's the bargain of the auction for you guys? I think mine's Ashatosh at three crore. I think that was really good business. I'm going to back my boy Tushra. I can't remember how much he went for, but whatever it was, it wasn't. Tushra it wasn't enough. Nothing, Five, yeah. I think he was. Yeah, I mean, somebody's going to open the bowling. Like you know, you could do bits of the power play. I think is it, that's an incredibly low amount of money to pay for him. Yeah. Um, okay, you've stolen some good answers. So I'll go with Tripathi because I absolutely love him. Um, mega high intent merchant nice. coming out at number three and just trying to smash everything 3.4 crores nothing for him lovely guys we'll, we'll leave it there thanks for joining us uh we'll be back soon with more from the world of franchise cricket see you all later bye <laughs>